Hey, my name is Greg Kasavin. I'm with Supergiant Games, and we are showing our newly announced game, Pyre. We just announced it Tuesday. Uh, we are a small team uh, based in San Francisco. Our previous games are Bastion and Transistor. Uh, and so as our, as our third game, uh, I think uh, Pyre is once again a, uh, a, a departure for us, something that puts us out of our creative comfort zone in a way that was really exciting to us and hopefully translates into a something interesting for players. Um, in this game, you lead your band of exiles to freedom through kind of this mystical purgatory through a series of ancient competitions, one of which you're seeing here. Uh, they, we're, we're, face off, we're facing off here against a rival team of exiles. The guys in gold are our adversaries, and we are the guys in blue. Um, so yeah, people, it was fun to watch the reaction uh, uh, when, when we showed our announcement trailer just earlier this week. Uh, our trailers are very much focused on the kind of atmosphere of our games, and then we, we show them playable soon after. Uh, so people don't quite know what to make of it gameplay-wise, and then it's been really fun having it here at PAX and letting players discover just what the gameplay really is. Our, our previous games have focused on these kind of life, life and death struggles, um, and here characters are are uh, what's at stake for them is almost a fate worse than death it's like eternal exile so we wanted um, we wanted to have a, a, a gameplay like like a, a style of gameplay where it's not just live or die for these characters where if you are defeated you have to like deal with the consequences you have to confront the characters afterwards uh, lick your wounds and try to go on and make the most of it um, and that meant not having the type of world in which characters are just sort of constantly being killed. This this cosmic competition involves trying to extinguish uh, the pyre of your adversaries. Each side has this kind of burning flame, and you ha you have possession of this orb. It absorbs your aura, which is like your your uh, your wrongdoing, your inner and outer strength. It absorbs it, and you you use it to extinguish uh, their fire. And who's ever fire burns at the end of the night steps closer to freedom and whoever you know whoever fails they're no closer or they actually come a little bit closer in some cases but you're you're trying to uh, defeat the other team by uh, by extinguishing their their kind of goal flame that's the that's the simple version of it uh, as as mentioned you know i think the best way uh, to discover what that's all about is just to kind of play the game and experience it in context. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the the play involves you. Here we're showing uh, three different characters, each with their own properties. They have, they have a few basic abilities, including the ability to jump. They can, they can transfer, they can pass the orb back and forth. They can throw the orb um, and they can sprint. Um, and you, using a combination of those abilities and coordinating with the other characters, you can kind of outmaneuver and outsmart your opponent. So it has, um, it's a very action-oriented pace, but it has kind of a tactical pace as well uh, that, that we're, we're pretty happy with ourselves. Uh, people, what people are not seeing that you also have here in PAX East is a lot of storytelling and adventuring through the world. Yeah, that's right. Like for us, um, we, we consider this a party-based uh, role-playing game, which is a totally new genre for us. Um, our previous games have been action RPGs, and they've they've been these relatively solitary experiences where you, um, you're kind of like a, a lone character in a world that is either ruined or about to be ruined in the case of Transistor. Um, and in this game, we almost wanted it to have like a road trip kind of quality where you're with a group of characters uh, for the long haul, like traveling across an interesting location um, and, and really getting to know them over the course of this long, uh, kind of bigger, grander journey. Um, so uh, we've never had a game where you have multiple characters kind of in your group um, and the ability to interact with them, get to know them. Uh, and that was a big appeal. That was really appealing for us as part of the concept of this game—a game with a larger cast of characters that you could get closer to. Um, so yeah, the structure of the game involves like sort of reading, reading the stars because uh, to to discover the location of the next right, and then and then traveling to that location, uh, and then competing against your adversaries and kind of getting closer to freedom, or in some cases farther away. Uh, and uh, we, we think it's uh, set up for you know, some really interesting characters and hopefully a, 
uh, an, an engrossing and memorable story, the kind of qualities that uh, uh, players have enjoyed about our games in the past, but in a, in a kind of a totally new way. One of the guys on my team asked if I should... Uh if he should shave his mustache. Yeah, what did you say? I told him to shave his mustache. And, 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 too shady. and did he do it? He did it. He did, he did in fact do it. Yes, that's right. So you'll get to make life or death critical uh, to, decisions. Yeah, critical decisions such as whether characters should shave their mustaches or not. Uh, yeah, stuff like that, you know. As silly of a moment as that is, uh, it's an important moment, we think, as well. It tells you something about the tone of the game um, and, and the kind of... Even though this is a pretty serious subject uh, of like characters who have been exiled, um, we we want a certain lightness of tone in this game, um, a certain warmth to it uh, that that we hope comes across well. It can make make players you know sort of uh, take it seriously, but um, but feel the the sort of warmth of companionship with these characters as well. Things we like to see with all our games is like for players to be able to play them in an expressive fashion and for there to be like different paths to success in, in the gameplay itself. There we, go. there we go, yeah, finally. So we have prevailed. But the game, you know, even if I had been defeated, the game goes on and kind of resolves differently because again, that's very, that's very in theme for us. Sometimes you suffer setbacks. You don't always win. This time, old Lendl here didn't always win, and he's pretty mad at us for uh, yeah. So there, once once you uh, once you complete one of the rights, uh, more of the more of the role-playing game systems reveal themselves. You gain what's called enlightenment. It's functionally similar to experience in other games. Uh, you gain enough enlightenment, and you can unlock these different masteries that let you specialize your character. So Dario here was kind of the big, slower character, and now um, I can choose between an ability that are, that'll let her do her like kind of charge move twice in a row, or cast her aura in a wider arc when her kind of big, uh, powerful attack there. Um, yeah, this is what the this is what the world map looks like. This sequence is non-interactive here because it's the end of the demo, uh, but this is how you kind of navigate the world. You'll go to different places, like different farther reaches of it, but yeah, this is the very end where you see the wagon kind of sail off into the distance. The game will be done sometime next year. It's coming to PlayStation 4 and, and Steam. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.